tired of paying for subscription fees and cloud storage? What if I told you that less than 50 bucks, you could have your own private server at home, no subscription, no hidden fees, and complete control over your data. So let's look into the details. Disclaimer, we'll be only using old hardware. As of now, you can find great deals on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, eBay Center, or nearest Goodwill or Value Village. You can find out PC for less than 30 bucks, and it's going to be very old PC. It's not going to be something with i5 or i3, but it can still work in most of the cases. And I'll show you the demo of it, how it works. If you are planning to use something new, your best option is going to be Raspberry Pi's alternative. The performance will be very limited, but it will be more energy efficient. I'll show you here. So inside this article, you can find out some of the best Raspberry Pi alternative which will cost you less than 50 bucks here and I'll give you the link as well. So the best one you can find out like the cheapest one according to me it's going to be NanoPi. So look into Friendly Electronics that's what the name of the company is I guess and look into Nano PC and NanoPi and you will find few of the boards here. I would say go with this one like it is sufficient it's not great but you can get a 2 gb ram version for around like 30 bucks and it's going to work well it's energy efficient it's not going to have lot of performance but still it will do the bare minimum task if you want to do your self-hosted version at home and if you don't want to invest in good old hardwares i would prefer investing in old hardware if you have something laying around like old laptop old cpu that's great but if you don't have it and if you want to buy it somewhere off the ebay or facebook marketplace you should do that why i personally think old hardware would be good as far as the research goes your hardware never goes bad as long as uh, it is well maintained so if you are buying old hardware if it's like 15 year old it's still going to work fine as long as you can run most of your software Another option you should look into is Oracle Cloud. It's not actually like home server eventually, but it's self-hosted. That means you have complete control over the cloud version of it. Why you should use it? Because it has very generous free tier. I am no way associated with Oracle, but as of now, August 2025, it has very good free tier. You can get around 24 gigabyte of RAM and uh, around 150 gigabyte of storage. So that's pretty good. It's going to be ARM based CPU with quad core, but it doesn't matter at this point. It's going to be great. Second reason why you should do it because cloud internet would be much faster than your home internet. So let's say something you need 24 by seven, you should use cloud instead of your home internet in some cases because it's, it's more reliable and that's why industry use it. So if you want to do it, you can do that. I am currently using it. So inside the free tier, look for always free. And you will be looking at this particular instance here. So you can create a virtual machine with ARM based Ampere A1 cores. You can have up to 24 GB of RAM. You can have one VM or up to four VM. And this is basically saying that how much you can use it which is like around one month so you can use it for totally free when it comes to so storage you can get block volume up to 200 gigabyte currently i'm only using like 150 gigabyte so this is my current setup inside oracle cloud i have installed uh, ubuntu server and inside ubuntu server i have installed casa os and i have crucial application which I'm going to need 24 by 7 up and running. So Sterling PDF, it's more for dealing with PDFs. Okay. Again, this IP address, I'm using it via tail scale. So it's not going to be publicly available. It's only available in my computer as of now. You can see CPU uses, it's nearly zero and zero degrees Celsius because it's a server. You can also see around 24 gigabyte of RAM is available and storage is around 150 gigabyte. I also have CX, uh, CX XNG, that's how I think we pronounce it, but uh, 
this one it's meta search engine so anything you search it on google you can search it here and i'm using it on regular basis and this thing it's running for more than like three months and i haven't got anything charged yet all of these applications majority of them are using cloudflare tunnel so i have not opened any port on the oracle cloud it's totally secure and i'm using it i never had any issue so far so but if you if you want a separate video on that please let me know in the comments and i'll create separate video just for the oracle cloud and how to set it up okay so next step why you should build your own home server first of all you will have full control over your data your data is not going to leak anywhere as long as you maintain the security of it don't open the ports don't open your machine to internet and you should be fine data privacy your data is not handled by third party so in case of oracle cloud again your data will not be handled by any third party you will be the one in charge of the data if you messed up anything on the server it's your own fault it's not oracle's fault so anything you do within the server it's it's your responsibility and one more thing there if you are using oracle cloud in future or if you are planning to use it don't store your personal data you should only have mission critical applications such as like uh, you can have your built warden if you are on a password manager or something like that you can host it there but don't upload your personal photos videos any of those thing on oracle cloud because sometimes if they flag your account because some sensitive information is there which it should not be there and uh, they might block the access i have seen people have faced this issue with especially with onedrive and google drive not sure about oracle's privacy policy but you should not upload your private data so that's the end goal i would like to say in data privacy and most importantly you will learn some valuable skills like networking docker how to set up your private vpn data management linux and hosting your application and access it over over the internet I think if you are a data scientist, data analyst, software engineer or any IT personnel should have some of this skill and it's good way to learn it. It's pretty fun. You are going to learn a lot of things and you will understand the core concept behind networking. So you should do that. I'm doing it for that only reason and I love doing it. So let's look into my current setup. So that's my current setup. You can see it's not pretty. As of now, I'm using Acer Virtion X2110. I'm not sure how old it is. It's just a PC laying around in my house for like few years. I have installed Lubuntu on top of it. And on top of the Lubuntu, I have Casa OS installed and I'm running more than like six, seven containers as of now. It has AMD Athlon CPU, which is like launched in 2005. So it's pretty old. I'm assuming this PC is older than like 12 years, 12 to 15 years. Initial storage was like 320 gigabyte HDD storage and I have upgraded to 128 gigabyte storage. Okay, so this is my old setup. Inside my server, you can see that it's, it's pretty bad. I have not cleaned it for a while. You can also see it has only two RAM stick. I have stick up my SSD here, which doesn't look pretty, but it's working. The ideal CPU temperature was around like 42 degrees Celsius. Considering this PC, it's been running for like more than one year and it's sitting beside the radiator. I think it's pretty good temperature. So now let's look into the configuration, what I'm planning to do there. Okay, so that's my older setup. Inside my setup, you can see I have a 128 gigabyte STD and I have only two slot for RAM and there is not much room for expansion here if i look at here we have only one hdd slot so i'm upgrading this one to this one again this is very similar specs but it has room for expansion as you can see clearly here it has 4 ddr3 ram slot it also has a room to put two hard drives one here one is here at the bottom and ssd i can just i think i can put it here at the bottom of the HDD or maybe I can just stick it anywhere which doesn't really matter that much so that's my plan 
and I actually purchased uh, I actually purchased this uh, hard drives from eBay for like 50 bucks and for 50 bucks I got two two terabyte hard drive I'll open it and show you okay so for 50 bucks I got a two terabyte enterprise class hard drive it's older hard drive it's not uh, brand new again it's uh, from like 2015 or so I stress tested both of the drives and it's in the good condition it has very good smart data so I'm, I'm using it for a while and since it's enterprise class I can run it for another like two three years before I switch it so I'm going to use this one two of this drive inside my setup and uh, upgrade my RAM as well and let's see how that goes one eternity later okay so finally after upgrading everything this is how the new PC looks inside the new pc we have three ram stick i have used the standard method where uh, second and the fourth slot it's taken by the best ram so this one is four gigabyte and this one is four gigabyte and this one is two gigabyte i have two terabyte drive one drive here another two terabyte drive is below the cd cd drive and my ssd i just take it here with a two-sided tab it's not a good idea to put everything in the machine and then run it but i'm going to do it anyway so let's hope for the best and see if this is working or not okay so i'm planning to use ubuntu server in my newer build and you might ask why not use proxmox because proxmox is one of the best virtualization software available for home servers people do prefer proxmox but in our case proxmox might not be the best choice because our cpu it's older it is only dual core cpu again i am the newer version of pc has same kind of specs it is like one version upgrade for uh, amd ethron so it's again dual core cpu and uh, proxmox is going to use zfs for raid configuration so zfs require more ram you at least need to have one gb of ram for one terabyte of storage and I'm going to use 4 terabyte of storage in total in RAID configuration, basically RAID 1 configuration. That means that my two hard drive will be used as a mirrored. So if even if I lose one of the hard drive, I still have my data in other drive. So it has disadvantage like it's not going to use like 4 terabyte of storage. I will only have around 2 terabyte of storage available, but I'm willing to make that sacrifice there. And another thing would be simplicity. It's going to be very stable. It's going to work for longer time. You don't need to update that frequently. Again, Proxmox, you don't need to update it, but it's good for uh, simplicity. And there is no overhead of hypervisor. That simply means that you are not going to create virtual machines on top of your uh, hypervisor. And Proxmox eventually based on Debian, same as Ubuntu server. So I don't think it's going to be a huge problem unless you are going to use it for ZFS or you are going to use LXC containers. I don't see any advantage of using Proxmox as a beginner. So that's why I'm going to use Ubuntu server. I have already set up Ubuntu server, so I'm not going to show you the setup part of it. I'll give the link in the description of uh, someone expert installing Ubuntu server. I have also done RAID configuration apart from Ubuntu server. So RAID configuration I have done while installing it. It's very easier to do it while installation. You just do create RAID configuration and you just uh, select the two hard drives you have for RAID basically. If you do that, that's everything there. In next video, I'm going to showcase how to install cockpit and CASAOS on top of Ubuntu server. And I'm also going to showcase some of the Docker container, which are must have tools for home server so stay tuned for that and that's everything for today's video and see you in the next one bye bye